Hello, View Candy here, and welcome to the start of a brand new city on River Delta. I don't have a name for the city. You can let me know in the comments below. You can also let me know if you want this series to continue, if you want us to continue flashing out on River Delta, or maybe do some starts on some other maps again. Let me know in the comments. But yeah, we're going to need a city name if we continue this series. So at the moment, View Delta will do. We're going to go for a North American theme for this. Um, I'm not having Unlock All or Unlimited Money on. We will play with the game. And Natural Disasters... Let's turn it on. <laughs> Why not? So coming into the start tile and the terrain here is actually quite challenging on River Delta. So you'll notice this river up here. This is a completely different height to this river down here. So you can't just come in and flatten your start tile. And also don't do that because although the roads do work much better, honestly, and the assets as well on flatter ground, it is still perfectly possible to build on slopes and get creative with it, particularly with the new road tools and the cut and fill options that we have. So that's what we're really going to be using today to uh, design out the start of our, our city in this area. So the first thing I do when I load into a map, if I'm thinking about longevity of a city, is think about where I want my downtown to be, what the road connections and rail connections, sea connections are, how can I utilise them? And I really recommend going into all of the maps on Unlock All as well to check where your resources are, because in this map, there is a load of fertile land right over this intersection. <laughs> So we want to use that. We want to utilize all of the fertile land we can because grain is very much needed, especially when you get to offices, pretty much all of the products that offices require, like software, electronics, things like that, all require grain. And then you've also got grain and things like food and petrochemicals and a whole variety of other products in your production chain. So grain is really, really important. And yeah, I want to use this fertile land. So we're going to get rid of that intersection actually and build our own. In terms of larger parts of the city though, this area over here seems pretty good for a nice downtown and we can extend it out onto the islands as well. The land is relatively flat and there's not very many raw resources over here for us to be covering up. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good location. And we do actually already have this highway running past it, which is gonna help us with connections in the long run. But we also have this local road coming in from the top of the map and i just have to say this map is stunning like we've got all of this river up here that we can build some more rural communities along maybe some smaller towns i definitely think there's a fun city county build could be had on this map for sure so we've got the rail coming in from the top but we've also got this local road like i mentioned that connects in here so for longer term traffic this road definitely needs to be connected into our main highway so that is what I'm going to start with and we are going to demolish all of these roads that they've very kindly built us on this map and start afresh. So the one slightly annoying thing is with this is that we obviously haven't unlocked highways to begin with so we can't sort out some of these lane management things here and we also can't bulldoze this little section of slip road here. But we'll manage around it for the moment and as soon as we unlock highways we'll be able to sort that right out. So what I am planning for this road is I'm thinking we're going to bring it down here on its own little layer with a little bit of retaining wall that we can now do with the cut and fill action over this side because you'll see the landscape is uh, pretty steep here. So if we create its own little layer that will give us a nice layer on our city we can build above it and build nicely below it on this bit of flat land right here and then bring it down into an intersection over this side but because of this fertile land I just want to bring it straight across the highway and connect this side of the highway into it over here and then for the junction from this side of it, we're actually going to bring it out over this side so that it can kind of swoop round where the fertile land is. And because we can't see it until Barstone 3, yeah, we're going to have to sort of guess ultimately where it is at the moment. But I really want to try not to put too many roads over it so that we can really utilise those rural resources as best as possible. So yes, let's get into this. And I am just going to start by flattening off this piece of land a little bit more here little bit tight around that coastline there and just a little bit further back this side just to give us a little bit more room for our main kind of starter town center and then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a layer here probably about this height is okay and we're just going to draw in where we want that road to be and then we'll use the slope function here right click at the top and click and drag from here to create a nice smooth slope to join up with this road now here to get our cut and fill in what we are going to need to do is terraform out an additional layer at the side of where our road is going to sit like this so this is all going to look horrendous until we smooth it out but i think it will be pretty cool in the long run and then yes this road is going to slope down to here from about this point and then that's going to head on over the highway to the junction this side so to get in our retaining walls, let's just see how we go. You can kind of see it when you put it in. Yeah, see, there you go. You can see it there. 
Let's go to a freeform curve for a second so we can make sure we're getting this placed in all along. So yeah, that's good there. Now here, I'm seeing that it's dropping away in the middle. So we're just gonna have to come back into terraforming, push this out just that little bit further. And you can kind of really push it right into the middle of where your road's gonna sit without too much comeuppance. Then we're gonna bring this up to where these lines meet. There we go. Yes, where they meet the terrain lines of that slope. And then coming back into this, we really need to pay attention as well to the height of this road. So you can see there, that's going up. 3.8% so there's something janky <laughs> in the terrain here so we probably just need to let's make this a lot smaller push this back a tiny bit at this point again it's kind of like it's a lot of trial and error to get these things in perfectly smoothly so let's uh let's see if we just put in a nice little bend like that see that is flat so hopefully yes when we put that in that's come in nice and flat so that's all good there Again here, that's completely flat. So let's go ahead and get that in. We can worry about the retaining wall in a minute because we can change that up and smooth that out. That's not a problem. Again here, we are starting to slope up. As long as we've got that retaining wall on the side, I'm happy because then we can tidy it up. Okay, so this bit doesn't here. So let's actually just grab this layer and pull it out just that little bit further into where our road is heading. Then again, we'll just continue on up. Yeah, so we have now got that retaining wall in and then we can connect it up over here. So now we're left with this. <laughs> so we can tidy that up by like coming in with our terrain tools and flattening out this land on top of it just to create that nice smooth retaining wall look. Now the one kind of downside of it is the shadows are very strong in this game, which I suppose is somewhat realistic, but it's incredibly dark along some of these walls. So you just kind of have to bear with it. But I think that's looking pretty good and pretty neat there. So happy with that. So let's continue to bring it on around this way using that same technique. Then yeah, here, we're just gonna bring this straight out and then up and over this road here. And then what we can do is connect our slip roads into this. Now this is gonna look awful because we don't have, we don't have any slip road roads. We have got this little one unit uh, normal road. So we're gonna use that for the moment. And we're gonna just try and do this so that it connects up, but not so that it actually looks good at the moment, but it'll be functional at the very least. And yeah, that's what we really want to see here. So if we turn off snapping at this point, we can get this road in nice and close underneath this bridge. And then we can turn snapping back on just to snap it back into the road. Again, we'll sort out all the lanes and things like that once we unlock highways. It's not going to stay like this. This is kind of how you have to start a city if you want to start with a design idea in mind, I suppose. Then for our main high street, let's again turn off snapping to zone cell length so we can get this in where we want to. And let's bring out a road which is going to essentially go straight through the main town. And then we can use slope function here to create a nice little kind of ramp. And just bend that up there. So yeah, that looks reasonably smooth, smooth enough for me to be happy there. It has kind of made the terrain a little janky at the top here, so we can just level that back out to get that really nice smooth top to our retaining wall. So now also from here, I do want more connections into this roundabout. This is going to start getting incredibly busy, but we will be upgrading this to a larger roundabout, so we don't need to worry about it too much for now. But let's have one road straight out there and we're going to have another one coming kind of out opposite side. And this is just going to give an alternative route up to our industry, which is going to sit over here because when we look at wind direction, so let's take a look at that, it's heading this way. So I can't put industry kind of anywhere this side, which is going to flow the air pollution over our town. So over here is going to be a better job of it. And we'll have to just make sure we're not building houses and things like that behind it. I think we'll have forestry industry probably in these hills up here. So yeah, that should be absolutely fine this side. But again, we'll just bring this road out. Let's make sure we got our contours on so that we can see it. And we're going to pretty much bring it out straight up this hill here because that's not too severe uh, in terms of a slope. So yeah, it's not too bad like that. We can actually just carry that reasonably straight on. I think we'll go straight on to about there and then let's turn it into a bend. So that gives us an alternative connection that way. And then down here, what we do want to do is kind of flow down the landscape. And we're going to use the landscape as part of our city over this side. But what I would like is this kind of faster route from the main collector roads going over onto this island because there's a really nice ore deposit over here that we can use for industry so we definitely want to get good road connections over there so let's go ahead and use slope tool as well just so we can make sure that we're getting the nicest possible slope 
and then we're going to come out and over this little waterway bit here so let's go up into a bridge that we can get over it nicely we're right at the tile boundary here which is going to make it a little bit tricky yeah if we go like that we've got a grade of 0.8 i'm quite happy with that and then we can continue that on reasonably flat over there yeah, so now we've got this like little smaller road running alongside our highway, which I think will be quite a nice feature there. We can smooth off some of this terrain so it's not quite as janky as it is here. Like the landscaping tools are vastly, vastly improved, so we don't get that little cliff texture. But we can see the raised road, which I think will be a nice view from a traffic point of view. OK, so now we've got our key connections in. What I do want to do is go ahead and add utilities to the build to make sure that we've got those in. So in terms of power, we don't have much wind production at all in this area at least so we're not going to be starting with wind power which is really generally how i like to start and the coal power plant is honestly way too expensive to start with it's just not an efficient kind of use of anything <laughs> really so we're going to start with a transformer and what i'm going to do is actually put it up here in our industry area and we're just going to come out with a very small little dirt road like this let's go straight out and we're going to create a tiny amount of industry actually around this so what we are going to do actually before i do <laughs> do that is flattened just a very very small area and then we're going to go ahead and add like just a really small little section for a bit of industry so i'm literally just going to go like that so we've got one building there and i think maybe we'll have one more building here and then we can add the transformer onto the end of it yeah let's snap that into the road like that and then we can connect up the power lines now i am going to hide this away underground so we're going to press page down on the keyboard and just connect it up into there for now we can put in power lines if we want to later but i want to see where ultimately our forest industry is going to go on this hillside before we do that so that is power now water we do have a nice water deposit over this side which we could use um in terms of sewage the water is very much flowing in this kind of direction so I think if we place it here it's going to head on away but it is going to go around these islands which is not super ideal so I think as soon as we do unlock the wastewater treatment plant we're going to want that in so we're not getting that dirty water because I just simply can't stand it. Yeah, we do have a small water deposit here but actually I think even though it's slightly less efficient like the water output is less and the upkeep is slightly more I would quite like to put in a water tower because I think it'll be a nice feature next to what will be a slightly bigger roundabout here so we'll leave a little bit of space just so we can accomplish that i think it's a nice feature when we head in and we're going to have fields all around this as well once we get uh, to the point where we've unlocked grain farming i think it's going to look pretty cool there now with sewage we do just want to connect this pipe up into our system but it doesn't need power to operate so we're all good from that perspective so that should give us everything we need to start our city so now we just want to go ahead and lay out some of those grids around here to get our main residential in around our town centre.
so this gives us a nice little foundation to start putting in our low density residential a little bit of commercial and industrial so i have created this little area up here on an embanked side of the hillside here to do a little bit of industrial now with industry i like to keep it super duper small so let's go ahead and do some zoning like i've tried to get in really perfect grids here so hopefully when we put in some zoning it kind of won't fracture it and break it if we keep really nice small little buildings so really kind of maximum four by four you'll see we get in some really nice little assets um, and this way you can kind of control how much smokestacks you have as well so you'll see when they come in we, we will get a few so there are obviously some assets with smokestacks on them but but you can delete them out and hope a new asset spawns and with these smaller assets the way the assets actually look doesn't dictate what products are actually coming into them so that's quite a nice thing i think indeed as well so again with low density residential you kind of want to relatively specifically zone <laughs> these in because you don't want to have patterns of all exactly the same house appearing over and over again so we're going to go ahead and draw in lots of different zone sizes here to fill in this grid so we'll kind of mix and match between what we're putting in and as soon as the house starts to build then obviously you can move on to the next one in the grid so like here i've got a four but it's going to leave us with another four on the end so i think we'll do a three two and then another three so let's just delete out Oh, see, I haven't waited for them to, <laughs> I haven't waited for them to spawn in. So let's do a three, a three, and another little two there. And that's how we're going to get some really nice grid patterns. I don't really mind if they spawn on different sides of the roads in these perfect grid. I'm kind of okay with that. Um, it will give us some nice looking little effects here. So we can do a little three by three here. Now, yeah, this looks like it's broken. So nothing's going to spawn in the back here. But actually, let's, uh, let's zone this bit so that we're filling up our entire block ultimately so you can kind of see that when an asset zones in if the zone's behind it so here i think it's going to do it as well if we zone there yeah we now can't zone in these blocks so that's something to keep an eye of when you are zoning in so we'll go ahead and zone that entire thing hope a bigger asset comes in yes exactly like that and yeah you can kind of go around the blocks like this so I'm just going to do a little bit to start off with and see how we go. We've got a bit of industry coming in over here. Let's go back to commercial, which I do want, generally speaking, along the high street. And again, some of the smaller assets can be pretty nice for this. So like, don't just be tempted to kind of mass zone in big six deep blocks. Like we've got a small town going on here. So I'm hoping a petrol station. <laughs> we can get it on the corner because I really like the effect of that. Although I'm just remembering we are going to upgrade this roundabout so actually we don't want to zone too close to it because the buildings will just get destroyed in the long run. Let's actually start our zoning here and I'm just going to go four deep with this little bit of commercial we put in there. And same goes for this side. Let's not go too big with these. Let's just have a few different lots of different sizes and see how we go with that. Okay so now here yeah we've just got a two by two spawning in on the block that we've done. So that tells me if we have to keep deleting it that there aren't any two by four commercial assets that will spawn into this yeah it keeps coming in two by two so i wonder if there's not actually even two by three commercial assets with that this is kind of a learning curve so let's go for a, a three by three here and see yeah see that has now spawned in you can kind of tell what's going to come in when you pay attention to that a little bit and we have a lot more demand for residential of course so let's keep zoning on in our squares here now when we come to zoning in on the hill over this side we don't want to make the assets too deep because the land is going to be kind of fractured between them so if we have a look actually it's not too badly slopey actually in this case but if it was a bit more slopey than that then the land can kind of get pretty fractured so like here if we zone close together again it's not too slopey but you can start to see that wobble and you'll start to see like random cliff textures coming through as well so it's not the nicest thing <laughs> to, to look at in the world and then again here where we're zoning up a slope we're just going to leave some small gaps in between the zones here to kind of get the best effect with this yeah so this is actually much more noticeable here we can start to see the land kind of bulging in between the assets so we can put a few trees over that to control it i think with this one this is maybe a bit too large so let's actually just go ahead and remove the zones at the back there and we'll get some smaller zones in so it's not kind of pushing up the terrain quite as much as it was we're just going to keep on zoning in a little bit of residential commercial and industrial like this yeah so here actually you can see with the industry we haven't got any smokestacks and we've got some really like lovely looking industry buildings like i really really like these kind of smaller ones like not going six by six or five wide or anything like that they look really cute and you can see here like we'll have a variety of industries so we've got machinery industry in a small little two by two we've got timber 
got some furniture we've got food over here so you get everything in with just these small little lots so yeah don't be afraid to to use them and we finally unlocked milestone one which is great we get three expansion points a development point and a whole load of money so you kind of don't really have to worry about money too much like we're not too far off being in the green at the moment but of course as soon as we start adding in some services so health we're not going to add in garbage yet you export garbage to the outside for a while so you kind of don't need it immediately and it is quite expensive as well in terms of the development point i think i am just going to go ahead and unlock roundabouts because we really need it to kind of judge where our roundabouts are going to go I would say the first things you want to unlock, you're not going to be able to afford any of these things ultimately first. I do want to get that fairly quickly, but it is expensive. So I wouldn't get any of these. Focus on road tools for the first couple of milestones. I really want highways. I'm just thinking when we get to the next one, we get two more points. So we're not going to be able to get highways at the next one. We'd have to wait till the one after that. But I think we are going to go ahead and get roundabouts in this case, because for the way we've designed our city, we're going to need it. So yeah, we're going to keep just zoning in small little blocks of industry like this and filling out these squares just to kind of judge demand and i would take it really slow like don't be tempted to just mass zone in huge gritty blocks to right from the start because it's difficult to come back from ultimately <laughs> so yeah definitely take it really slow take your time leave spaces for alleyways and things like that as well and the reason why I haven't filled in a lot of the grid around here is because there's going to be some larger assets that we're going to get into these spaces. But also for this side, when it comes to the row houses, which we have now unlocked so we can get into it, they are pretty finicky to get in. So you kind of want to build your roads around them. And I'm going to show you what I really mean by that right now. So here, we definitely want to turn off snap to side of building and snap to guidelines to get in a perfect grid, which is what I was doing before. So we're actually going to come out now that we've got these shops in we're going to come out behind these shops like this with an additional road and we're going to connect it up to there and then what i'm going to do from this is form that perfect 90 degree angle to get a nice grid into here i don't think we want to come too far with it see and that has come out broken actually so let's <laughs> let's go back with that so what we can do to overcome that is actually just put in a pathway here to stop the grids kind of coming out of this road so let's go ahead and do that and now we've got our nice grid that we can snap to here so let's come out a little way i think just like that for now then we're going to get our row houses and what i would like i'm actually going to use european for this because i think they've got a certain charm the three deep ones so we're going to just do a really small block of them like this we'll wait for them to zone in and we definitely want this end one in to zone in before we put in the next one which is happening very slowly you can see like you don't need much medium demand right from the start like yeah that's gonna we'll have to sit and wait <laughs> let that happen for a little bit um but we have unlocked medical and death care now the thing is with these is they are quite expensive again so you don't have to like rush into getting them straight away your residents will be absolutely fine so i think what we're going to do is just build up our city a little bit more we start getting high rent warning complaints so we're definitely going to want to add them but the other thing to consider as well is plopping these are going to really help you get to the next milestone so you might want to go ahead and do it so i think in that case we are actually going to get them in money isn't too much of a trouble we're heading towards the green but we're not quite there yet so let's add in our medical clinic here then actually i think if i have measured this correctly i should have enough room for our cemetery in this space yeah so we're going to add that in there right in the center of our town now we're not going to be able to expand this this is the other thing to consider with the mausoleum um, or indeed with the extra temple but that's fine this is just a small little town so i don't need those upgrades in this town i think that's going to be more than enough to cover us um, and this one as well one of the upgrades is just within the plot so that's fine but we do have an upgrade at the back here so what we will want to do is kind of plan around that and leave that space clear just so we can add that in if we need to at a later date so what I am going to do here, and also if you're getting this blinding white, click I on your keyboard. If you haven't seen it yet, I have actually done an 80 tips and tricks for new players to City Skylines 2 video, which goes into loads of tips like that. It will be linked in the top right of the screen right now, if you do want to go and watch that. So yeah, this needs, I think, 3 by 6 So if we do that, let's, um, let's just check that that can still fit in there, which it can. Yeah, wonderful. So we can leave that like that. We can actually direct this road down here if we want to, just to make sure we know exactly where that space is. So here as well, we're going to do like a nice little commercial design. Let's get rid of the white around a little car park at the back here. 
I'm just going to go for a couple of like three deep little shops, just very small little shops at the back here and another one there. And then again, what we're going to do is bring this grid road round once that has spawned in. Now, one of the car parks is six by six. It's the second largest one. So again, what I'm going to do is make sure that we're leaving a block here to add in our car park. So we've got enough space for that. So again, I'm just going to spawn in with some really small little commercial units around this side, which hopefully they should spawn onto this road as soon as we get some to fans back. <laughs> yeah, that one's coming now. So we can leave that there and that can grow in in a second. Let's go back and check on our row housing. So we have now actually got that one here. We actually interestingly don't have demand for low density at the moment. So we'll keep spawning these in and see what we get. So yeah, now we've got this little block in here. What I am going to do is draw this one across the back. And we're going to create an area which is almost like a little kind of housing estate, ultimately. So I'm actually going to draw this road across the back here. Actually, let's get rid of this one for the moment. We can draw this behind the commercial that's already spawned in. Then we're going to come back to here. And now we're going to have a few of these 3x3 three three blocks facing this way. And this is going to be essentially an alleyway in between them. So this is why I don't draw in the road network until we've done it, because if you draw it in, you're going to get houses facing like all different directions. And also you want to kind of plan it around the little blocks that you're doing. So here again, I think we can draw that in that way. And then if I go to the row houses, we put these central ones in. And as soon as they've spawned in, we can fill in the end bits. So like here, I don't want to do this yet because that'll end up being <laughs> a, six, a six deep block. So yeah, we wait till that three one comes in and then we can zone that. We can zone in that side. And yeah, what we're going to get with these little European ones is some very cute kind of little maisonettes. So if we place these in small little blocks and arrange them like this, we get quite a nice little look to it, I think. And as soon as we unlock the medium density housing and some of the low rent housing, you can also add just some small little blocks in there as well. And now another benefit of zoning in small blocks is that they're going to pay less rent. So you should have less low rent warnings um when you zone small like this so i think that's probably my biggest tip is start small don't try and be tempted to mass zone huge areas because you will get problems further down the line ultimately so coming back over to our industry you can see we've got a few little smokestacks <laughs> starting to form which we don't really necessarily want so i'm going to delete these out and we'll wait for another building to spawn in this one actually, this isn't a smokestack, this is just a tower. So again, I really, really like some of these assets. Like my initial thought on the industry was, oh no, too many smokestacks. But actually the small ones are very nice and lend themselves to quite a nicely little designed, very small kind of warehouse industrial estate area. So while we wait for things to kind of level up and zone in a little bit more as well, we are going to spam in a load of trees now. I quite want spruces on this map because I really like the look of them and also they don't turn orange in autumn and they look really nice in winter. <laughs> so yeah, I quite like some spruces and some pines on this map ultimately. Now it's not really, we do have pines and oaks and things like that in, in the main um, forest that's on here and we do have spruces as well in all of the extensive forest that surrounds the mountains. But yeah, it is going to be a case of kind of like adding spruces in. So in fact, actually, if we just turn our brush strength up to 100, I'm going to go ahead and add in a whole load of dense spruces into our forest up here as well. Because just having that green dotted in amongst the orange when it comes to things like autumn, I just I really like the look of that. So that's what we want to kind of achieve, I think, with this. Of course, I was forgetting that we have unlocked the roundabout. So let's go ahead and add those in. I'm going to add the largest one in here because we've got so many exits off it. But then I'm actually going to go for the second largest for these two little roundabouts here off the highway. Um, and I think that will be nicely appropriate. And then, of course, we still need to unlock highways to sort out the lane mathematics here and obviously put in proper slip roads. So we've just reached the second milestone. We've got another four expansion points and two more development points. Now, I have just actually unlocked the three tiles this side so that we can expand that way also with this level we have unlocked education so that's great we can start getting that in and also the medium density housing as well so we're definitely going to want to use some of that now in terms of development points i'm kind of torn because the next level we get three so we can get highways and advanced road services then but i don't think there's a huge amount we can really do with advanced road services right now like traffic isn't a problem i'm not too worried about parking on roads for the moment we could tidy that all up at the end so i'm actually going to go ahead and get parking areas the other one we might want to consider is college as well so that is going to be absolutely next on my list out of all of the things here probably followed up by the water treatment plant just because i really don't like poo water <laughs> but we're going to get parking for now 
so let's go ahead and get that and then we can start to place some in so you'll see like this little commercial bit that we were developing over here with a few little commercial units in it i've left this space a six by six space which should fit really nicely no it doesn't <laughs> our parking lot okay so it's actually five by seven so i've measured that completely wrong but that doesn't matter we can actually i think in that case because we've got this grass border here we can actually put in some trees there to decorate from around our little commercial unit at the back there so let's go ahead and do that and we could actually do like a nice little hedge border so this is about the limitations of the detailing obviously right now in the game once we get our hands on some mods and some workshop assets then hopefully we'll have a bit more i think if we do luckily get a version of find it 2 for city skylines 2 then there's so many props already in the game that we can place and detail up some of these areas with hopefully we'll get access to fences that way as well because there's a whole load of fences in the game that would just be really useful to have but for now we can put in a nice little hedge border with our cultivated green bush and then maybe some trees behind it we could maybe a pine because we're going for the old spruces let's put in a few of those back there so that's going to kind of block off from around our car parking we have got one massive <laughs> commercial i don't want one that size so let's just pause the game delete that oh there we go actually we have managed to get two smaller units in yeah i think that's really what we want around this little area in terms of the style that i'm going for for that much smaller commercial units all around and then i've added in a little bit more row housing here just gone for the american style of housing now you can see they look like single family homes at level one so that's why i chose to use the european over here because it gives that more sort of maisonette feel but now that we've got the medium density let's go for let's go for north american and we can start to kind of incorporate some of this now what i would quite like is a skate park in here i think i'm not entirely sure how big it is but we're going to go for a few little small blocks of this around the back so i'm thinking maybe yeah something along those lines in terms of size and we'll just have a couple of those in there for now perhaps one more over this side and we can do some nice path work around that i would also like to drop in another car park at the back of the commercial i think here would be nice for that now you'll see we can't get that nicely in the corner so let's just place it in the concrete does actually extend but if we go relocate let's turn off snapping we can get this nicely in the corner i will make it fit so we just want to there we go uh yeah so that fits in much nicer into that corner and then we get our little parking behind our shop row here and i think what we will do with this again is let's get our little narrow alleyway road and we're just going to draw a nice simple border around that to frame that off then we can continue to put in a little bit more housing here so i'm actually going to go back to the european and do another small block of our little kind of maisonettes so let's call it maisonettes over here then we'll do a slightly larger block of the medium density next to the car park and this will kind of help to give us some nice variation in this area i think i would like a little bit more of a kind of pop in height in addition to that area so i think we'll focus on that over here so i'm actually going to bring out an individual road here and you can see the zoning has gone off it which is kind of annoying <laughs> so um let's just bring out a section like this what we're going to do is use paths to control it so i use this all the time so i'm going to just draw in a path here i'm going to draw one in up that side and now we've got the zoning against this road so let's go ahead and put that in once it spawns in we should be all right to delete the path sometimes it can change once you delete the path which is slightly annoying particularly if you've snapped it into the road actually like this so i go ahead and do that yeah you'll see it has kind of reverted back which is quite annoying if we pause the game what we can do here is just we'll add in a little path decoration yeah that's actually worked for now so that's fine so we can just have in a little path border along here again when it comes to detailing we could add in a little hedge make it sit in a little bit nicer so again just placing these bushes really want prop line though <laughs> we could even if we're on european theme yeah let's try and see if we can squeeze in a couple of poplars into here no we don't quite have enough room so actually i'm going to pause the game i'm going to delete that path again let's go ahead and grab it i'm going to move it slightly further back again we've got snapping up here so we can be quite flexible in its placement then if we come back to trees now we can get the little poplars yeah we can just add a little row of these so once they're fully grown it'll look like a cute little alleyway i think between these houses there so yeah we'll have that one like that let's go ahead and add in a few others so i think we'll have one on the corner 
here we can leave space for little playgrounds as well so once we unlock parks playgrounds are two by two so they're really nice and cute and easy to add in um we'll go for a slightly bigger block this side and then again here i would really like some zoning on this end so let's just put in a path for now to kind of block off that way and we'll go for that size i don't know if we're going to have an asset of this size so we'll have to wait and see if that spawns in if not we could trim it back i think we will actually trim it back let's have it as the same asset as there which is going to make for a nice kind of uniform approach so i'm just going to bring that out one tile like that and then put in our zones again so yeah being very precise about your zoning and about your roads i think really lends itself to having quite nice designs i think again we're going to add in that path we'll probably do the same design all the way along here at least until the back of this kind of estate that we've got going on and we can add in some connections to the main road there and also up into the estate so let's put in a primary school it's really important to get education in as soon as you can ultimately in this game because it takes them years to progress through the education system well six months in fact it gave well, not years not quite years um but it is a long time so it's really worth doing that as soon as you can i think we will go for a playground that's well-being and well-being is really important for happiness and also wealth and income and things like that so i think that's probably a good one to have here so let's actually just tag it onto the school on this side and then we can continue to draw our road networks in around this now this commercial zoned in we don't need to be worried about coming around it and we can come up and join into our residential district back here and then once we have demand for it we can add in a few more houses around the back at the school and do a little bit of nice detailing in front of it and beside it i do also want to get a high school and i'm actually not going to do the lovely extension to it which has the massive sports ground because i think that's a little bit unnecessary for a small town like this but i am going to place the high school up on this little ridge here because again i think that gives us quite a nice little look to it and once we build up some more housing and things around that i think it will help to blend that in a little bit but it stands kind of pride of place over the town so i i yeah i really like that and what we can do to help students get up to it in fact let's actually just relocate this a second and move it over ever so slightly let's add in a pedestrian bridge here so let's do a crossing that comes across i don't mind a tiny bit of a slope so i think we're just gonna have to accept that with this terrain here and let's drop this down all the way to the ground and if we bring it right up to this corner here let's turn off snapping for a second yeah 10 percent slope is not much at all so yeah that will give us a really nice very long little pedestrian path over our road here and we could go ahead and actually upgrade it to a bridge i don't think we can do this suspension one yet because of the road beneath i think the covered one is going to be nicest here so let's go ahead and do that and we can't squeeze this in beside the road but that's fine i think we'll have the the rest of it uncovered but covered going over the main road there so at milestone three we start to unlock livestock farming and stone mining via police loads and loads of stuff and we will also get access obviously to our highways and advanced road services so i'm just going to wait a little while continue zoning out a little bit more of the residential until we hit that milestone okay so we have now unlocked level three milestone assets and we've also unlocked the rock musician mansion <laughs> now i would just like to go ahead and place this and i would quite like to put this on this island is what i'm thinking because i think that might be kind of cool and a little bit of a statement so if we put it at the end here let's just plop it in it does flatten down the ground but it doesn't actually look too bad i don't think and yeah <laughs> that's gonna be our little rock style mansion on here we can do some nice detailing along the little road maybe some hedges and that sort of thing maybe some flowers in there as well but i think that's gonna sit in quite nicely and then let's just come on to police and fire before we get onto the industry so police station yes we're gonna slot in right about there so the good thing about the police station is it doesn't have any upgrades that sit outside it so nice and easy just to remember to leave that space and add that in quite like that position as well on the edge of town nearing some of the commercial i'm not too keen on these gas station assets the one with the building at the back definitely looks a little bit better but that is what it is for now 
And I think with the fire station, we're actually gonna put it in the middle here beside our little tower block residential area, if that's what we wanna call it. So yeah, I think we'll add it in close to the high street, but not too close. So round about there, opposite this parking lot might look quite good as well. We just need to get in some parks and some more houses and buildings around it to help that settle in. But yeah, I think that that will do nicely. So let's just pause it for a second. Development points as well. We do have three now, so I'm definitely going to unlock that and highways just so that we can sort out our highway mess. So we can finally see our natural resources. And this is what I was talking about. This whole area here is fertile land. So I want to use as much as that as possible for our grain farming. And really annoyingly, we've built over a little bit of it with the industry. We've got another big patch up there. We've actually got quite a bit of fertile land on this map, so it's not the end of the world, but I think it would look really nice to have the fields around this junction and up next to the highway anyway, so we can come onto that. Livestock farming does not need to be on fertile land, so I'm actually going to place this slightly further away out on this side, and it's quite slopey here. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful with how we place this because the buildings that spawn in it can be <laughs> quite large sometimes. We're going to want to flatten off the bit of land where we're going to put the main farm area because that will be flat and it will look strange if we don't go ahead and do that. And then we're going to sort of slope out a lot of the rest of this land here so we can smooth it out. I think that will do for the moment. Um, we're not going to make this particularly big so we're going to have a pretty small area in here with this because I kind of want to avoid having as many of those uh, crazy buildings building <laughs> in as possible. So let's get that in. We'll see how it looks. We'll see what buildings spawn into it. And yeah, immediately. <laughs> We've got a massive building halfway up the hill, so that's not ideal, but we can make it sit in a little bit better with a tiny bit of landscaping. Let's just turn the strength down on this a little bit so we don't smooth on into it. But it's slightly less jarringly obvious <laughs> if we do that. No, but that's not too bad. I just wish we had roads in a more appropriate livestock pasture texture for our little livestock farm but that'll do for like a starter livestock farm we can add in some more down this slope if we want to later on as well and let's get on to stone so i do want to be careful not to go over this fertile land here but i'd like to add in a stone quarry around this area and we'll come out of this junction and we're just going to create a dirt road which meanders on down to where our stone quarry will sit now we're going to go ahead and place the main building up against this road here so we'll come out about there and then <laughs> i'm gonna try and create like a, a slightly more interesting stone pattern and we're gonna cut it into the hillside so yeah if we look at that there's a bit crazy on the hillside i quite like the little steps up here but what we can do from this point if we then level this off what we can do is start to create essentially a basin for our stone quarry to sit in which can make it look pretty nice actually make it look a little bit more realistic like they have actually cut into the landscape to extract some of this stone and from the highway i'm quite like it. <laughs> the different layers in it to be honest but what would make sense is probably creating like a smoothed slope up in one section here i think maybe if we just draw this one back just a little bit that will look quite good because yeah one thing i really quite like in these stone quarries is actually landscaping a little bit. So we've got a low brush strength on. Let's just pull up some little hills here, some little mounds, and then it kind of looks like piles of stone as you go through. <laughs> so that's the sort of effect I'm going for. Like if we look at it from here, you can see, I mean, this one isn't great. We need to reshape it out, but you can see the sort of thing I think looks nice here. But yeah, we can have some nice, just small, gentle piles of rock in and around the place and then we've also got this kind of tiered bit as well which I think just adds to the sort of the ambience of it the, the realism of it if you like but yeah quite happy with our stone quarry in there I think that that is good and also just to show you as well what I've done with the industry I did one much larger industrial building over here to make this sort of look like a factory area and interestingly I actually didn't get a big smokestack I thought I was going to so we've just got this one with a couple of small warehouse looking assets around the back and a secure car park which makes for quite a nice little factory compound base so yeah i think we'll do a few of those around the map rather than doing kind of larger industrial areas like this and we do need to go and do a little bit of trimming in here 
So what I will do now is drop into a brief time lapse just to kind of tidy up some of the zoning and aspects around the centre of our area here. A little bit of detailing here and there. If we make it to level four, then we'll add in the grain farms, of course, and also pop in some parks, which we'll have at that level as well. But it's just about kind of tidying it up now for the start of our River Delta City.
so we have hit autumn so things are a little bit gray but we've got a lot of orange everywhere as well so that sort of brightens it up a little bit but yeah this is the start to our city and i'm pretty pleased with how it has come out what i would like to do in the long run just talking about the trees quickly is actually go through and delete these and replace them with mostly a spruce mix ultimately so they're kind of green like this with dots of the autumnal trees within them that's the sort of vibe that i think i'd want for this map so if we do continue this series and again please do let me know in the comments if you'd like to see this continue or if you'd like me to do start similar to this on other maps as an alternative then let me know in those comments below but if we were to continue it i'd definitely go ahead and do that and then wait a little while till they've grown up so we can still get in some forestry resource because I just like this blend a little bit better it's sometimes too orange in autumn to be honest but yeah let's have a little look at what we've done so if we go over to the stone quarry obviously that is still in there i've just spammed a few little trees around it and hopefully once they grow up that'll sit in a little bit better because at the moment it does look slightly odd <laughs> i won't lie but i kind of like the effect of what we're trying to go for there the industrial area has grown up we have got a few smokestacks but it's not dominating the skyline so i am quite happy actually with this look and the mixture of assets that we've got in here feels nice and varied because we've got that kind of different zoning as we go through so there is a lot of asset repetition but if you vary it up like this it's far less noticeable i find really like how the little transformer area looks as well just a small amount of industry there and this factory has leveled up and i love this <laughs> i absolutely love this this is where I don't mind smokestacks like this looks like a little factory complex like really 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 like this vibe here the little warehouses again at the back super super pleased with how that kind of sits over the town as well added in a little pedestrian bridge over here and then just coming down to some of these commercial assets like these are two different assets here next to each other but this combination I love it <laughs> like this garage by itself looks a little bit jarring without any kind of building to go and buy your gas from so i quite like that this has come up next to it because then it looks like the shop that's actually attached to the gas station so really liking that look and then with these little commercial assets we've actually got the same business moved in next to each other so businesses do make franchises in your town as well so if they've they're profitable they'll make more of them so we'll see here this is a beverage business but yeah they've opened up two, two shops immediately next to each other which i don't think is the best business but there we go there we go yeah loving how the little row houses have turned out with the european kind of maisonette combo ones multiple doors on the front look super cute in this little kind of block combination here with some of that larger medium density blocks in the middle and a little playground next to it now i did actually with the development points make quite a huge mistake I really wanted to put in the skate park in, in one of these two areas here if it would fit and for that I needed to unlock sports parks but in my haste I went and unlocked large parks instead. So I have the large playground which is a very nice asset but not quite the skate park yet so I've kind of wasted two development points honestly but that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. But yeah liking these little park designs in these open spaces here just adds uh, yeah, a little bit of green space I think is nice in and amongst your town. And again with this little development this little block here we've got lots of nice decoration around it particularly with the hedge borders turning nice and orange in, <laughs> in autumn now yeah like this and kind of dog park slotted in there nice open green space here you can imagine a kind of like people playing football there or something during the summer um but yeah it's come together pretty nicely we've still got that open space to expand our medical center when we need to uh oh yeah loving the rock star mansion on the island yeah I think it looks good and once we kind of build up into the hillside as well around the high school that will sit in a little bit better i have done a little bit of kind of road maintenance getting the parking off some of the roads i've left it outside the front of the row of houses here because i thought that was appropriate for that but then taking it off in some other areas so keeping it nice and varied again and i have also converted this to a highway as well <laughs> so that now doesn't have zoning on it will act really nicely as a kind of ring road around the town and on connecting into that obviously that national road that was coming out from the map there as well and the grain fields yeah look pretty cool at the entrance here i do like the shot if we come in from this highway entrance here overlooking the town that way feels nice and before we go i do just want to mention one thing we haven't actually looked at taxes or anything like that at the moment so production we're making obviously an absolute load of grain and a load of stone here but taxes one thing that is really good to do is to lower down the taxes for uneducated and poorly educated so i'm going to do that right down to let's make it three percent let's keep charging them a little bit at least 
and we'll leave the educated ones up for now because next time we will probably start coming in and putting in some of the low rent housing and in order for that to work and not abandon we need those taxes down so i think that will help there we are still in the red but we're making enough money at the moment because we're still going through the milestones nice and early on so we'd probably need to balance that budget again if we came onto another episode in this city but for a start of a city i think this sets it up pretty well so for today that is going to be it but if you have enjoyed the episode please drop a like and a comment on the video and subscribe to the channel if you are new to it for more city skylines content and again, please do let me know if you would like to see me continue out this build on the River Delta map or what other City Skylines content you would like to see. Do you like these starts to a map? And we also need a name for this if we do continue it. So get those name suggestions in now and I will pick one of your suggestions in the event that we do continue the city. I'm kind of liking it. I think I'd quite like to continue it. And while you wait for more content, why don't you check out one of the videos on the screen now? But that is all from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in. I'll catch you again next time. Bye bye.